What is going on, guys? Money Webby here, back again on Saturday. We got a nice 13 game slate tonight. A lot of good options to choose from, but I got to narrow it down for you with six of my favorite plays by Money Six. So go ahead and drop a like in the video before we get going. If you're ready to win some money on this one, uh, let's try to get over 80 likes. That'd be greatly appreciated on the video. So if you don't see it over 80, be sure to spam with that like button. So let's get into it. The first guy up. Clayton Kershaw, the guy's been in great form, has really good upside again here against Arizona. So in the last three, 31, 28, 27, uh, and he's had very um, efficient just starts. He won eight innings, two out of those three, and even seven innings and 88 pitches. So his stuff has been money, and against Arizona, he's been actually really good um, already against him. This was before he kind of settled into his groove. In three starts, he has 25 drafting points on average and only a 169 batting average against. So really good stuff. Normally, he's better at LA. Um, if you look at the splits, he's around four drafting points better on average. And uh, they're only implied three runs here. And he has a really good BVP history and 200 plate appearances. They only have a 182 batting average and a 29.5% K rate. So you can definitely get a good amount of Ks. Uh, he's averaging like what is that 24 divided by three so like eight uh, k's per game against arizona already um so i think he's gonna have another good game here so i'm gonna go ahead and lock him in there as my sb1 can definitely get around 30 drafting points and for my second guy i'm gonna go with john gray his upside isn't nearly as good um, because the K's have been kind of dropping off for him, but he still has that ability to go back and strike out a lot of guys, especially in this matchup against San Diego. They have a very high K rate against right-handed pitchers, and Gray has been able to do in the past. He has a 25.8% K rate versus the Rockies in his career. And this is a huge park upgrade going from Coors Field to San Diego. Um, can definitely limit some more home runs. That has been kind of one of his biggest issues recently. Has been allowing the whole, uh, the long ball, the home run. Um, but I think he can just like stop a home run in this game in San Diego. And he pitched pretty well against them uh, at Coors Field um, the other week. He went 6.1 innings. Only allowed two runs and five hits and got 20 drafting points. Uh, so I think he can pitch a little bit better than that, honestly. Go around maybe seven innings, get a few more Ks, and uh, just limit the home run. So at 8,800, definitely uh, some good ability to return value. So I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there. I feel very safe about those two guys. You want that safety at pitcher. And John Gray and Kershaw definitely give you that tonight. So... Not that much money remaining per hitter, only 36, 37, but still there's a ton of good value on this slate of hitter. So for my first guy, I'm going to go with Trey Mancini at 4,300, going against a really bad pitcher in Phil Meyer, who's been getting killed by right-handed batters. He's allowing 2.3 home runs per nine to them and a 50% hard hit rate allowed to right-handed uh, batters. So I think Mancini can crush one against them. And Mancini has been in terrific form recently. Uh, the guy's been hitting a lot of extra base hits. If you look at the game log here around double digits, what is that, five games in a row before last night. And in August, he had a 264 ISO. So the power is coming back to the bat. He had a very solid year last year, uh, but he was struggling a good portion of the year before that month in August. So now that he's turning things around, uh, he probably has some confidence going. He has been batting towards that meat of the lineup around that 3-4 spot. And he has been better against right-handed uh, pitchers throughout his career. So he has some solid power. And this is some good hitting conditions, especially for right-handed uh, batters. In this game, there's going to be 12 mile an hour winds blowing to left field in 88 degrees. So the ball is going to carry well for these right-handed batters. So at 4,300... Um, I think he can have another solid game, double-digit performance. So I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there. And for my second guy, uh, I don't know why. He, I thought he was going to put him in the outfield. So we got to switch that up, Mancini. Find your way to the outfield. Um, and so put him in there. We got a first baseman coming up. So Ryan O'Hearn here. O'Hearn at 3,700. Going against Dylan Bundy, a very good matchup. And this is another guy that's been killing the ball. Um, since he's been called up, and what? And how many games has he played now? 21 games. The guy has seven home runs, so some really good power. And if you look at the splits against righties, I believe all of them have come against righties. He's a 429 ISO and a 499 Woba versus right-handed pitchers. So very elite splits. Uh, like I said, it is a small sample, but still, that is insane. Definitely noteworthy. And going against a guy like Bundy, who's just been allowing home run after home run since the All-Star break, he's allowing 3.3 home runs per nine since the All-Star break. So this guy is literally pitching like home run derby BP 
um, recently. So I think a guy like Ryan O'Hearn, who has been showing really solid power against right-handed batters, I mean, against right-handed pitchers, can definitely go deep off a guy like Bundy. And over the whole entire season, not even factoring just the all-star break, he is allowing 1.9 home runs per nine to left-handed batters. It's probably even more since the all-star break, but still, uh, O'Hearn, really solid ability. He's been killing it in Kansas City. I guess he loves it here in 10 games. He's batting 344 with four home runs. So think he can go deep again here. Solid value. Go ahead and lock him in there <clears throat> as your second hitter for my third guy. Miguel Sano here at 4,000. I recommended him last night. Let him let me down. He did have a tough luck with one of his hits I was watching. Uh, I was probably going to land for a double, um, but Chu and left field made like a sliding grab to stop the to stop the double. So that kind of sucked, but still, I really saw it upside here again. Another great matchup going against Giardo here, who has been getting killed by right-handed batters this year. And throughout his career, he does have some reverse splits. I believe he's worse against right-handed batters. And on this season, uh, he's allowing 393 Wobit to right-handed batters. Like I said, he's worse versus righties. And this is a park upgrade again here for Snell. Really good hitting conditions. Like always in Texas, 91 degrees. They're implied five runs. So Snell in that cleanup spot or so. Uh, can definitely go deep here. Give us some solid upside, double digits, and only 4000 Is it, a, it, is a, it is a solid price tag. So I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there as my third guy. So not much money left over, but still, like I said, good value on the slate with a guy like Logan Forsythe, who has been batting in the two spot. He was given the night off last night, but he should be back here in the two spot against a guy that he has hit very well against in Giardo. He's 9 for 21 with two doubles and a home run in his career. So really solid ability. Forsyth, another guy that actually has been better against right-handed pitches this year. And uh, similar to Snell, Park upgrade going to Texas here. And in that two spot, he can get up around five of bats and maybe some RBI opportunities there. So I like him a lot. Way too good of a value to turn up, especially if he's in that two spot, which he should be. So I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there against the guy that he's seen the ball very well against. So those are the the money six, the six guys. And you can't just like punt that catcher maybe. Um, go with the cheap guy to give you some money to pay out for the rest of your lineup. So that is it though. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to slap a like. Like I said, over 80 likes would be greatly appreciated. And also hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Um, we got NFL DFS right around the corner and actually just uploaded my NFL DraftKings Week 1 picks. Um, I'll have the video pop up on your screen so you can click on that right now and go watch it. So good luck tonight, guys, on this 13-game slate, and we'll see you back here again next time.